The agents are accused of burning down homes of illegal farmers and destroying their belongings. We spoke to many small-scale farmers living in protected forests, who'd seen as the State Forestry Agency arrived to burn down their homes and crops without any warning, forcing their children to walk tens of kilometres simply to find shelter. This type of policy has also created opportunity for abuses, as the state agency demands illicit payments from farmers simply for them to stay on land they've lived on for decades. A technical advisor from one of the institution's man in the forest, however, says there is no evidence of malpractice by its agents. There have been cases of deaths in the forest that we oversee, notably the Coverley Forest. But according to the information that we've obtained on the ground, the deaths occurred as a result of old rivalries between different clans. Around 80% of Cote d'Ivoire's primary forest has been chopped down in just five decades since independence, amid an agricultural expansion that helped make it the world's top cocoa grower. President Alessandro Watara, who took office in 2011, wants to reverse the loss. A 2014 forestry code seeks to restore forest to a fifth of its territory, up from 6% a day. We think the Ivorian government should adopt a different approach, where it works with farmers collaboratively to reforest areas of land, while at the same time allowing farmers to continue to earn a living. Ivorian authorities have in the past said they will offer resettlement packages to people living in protected lands. But some residents say they still do not know how much help they will get and thousands say they have nowhere to go. Maria Galang, CCTV.